David Ross says, great video. Will an external amp give me better sound performance than my AVR's amplification for my LCR or his left center and right speaker? David, this is a fantastic question. So the first thing we need to talk about is the power supply of an AVR. So your audio video receiver has a built-in power supply. That power supply has to give power to each speaker that it's driving in your setup. So if you have five speakers or seven speakers or nine or 11, the more speakers you have in that, that um, configuration, the less wattage per speaker that that amplifier is going to be able to send to each speaker. So prime example, let's say you have an AVR and the manufacturer rates it at 140 watts per channel. If you look at the manufacturer specs on their website, almost always they'll give that number, but then right next to it, it'll say at two channels driven. So basically this AVR can deliver 140 watts if you only have two speakers, okay, stereo. Well, in home theater world, we like to have a lot more speakers than just two. We may have five, we may have seven, nine, 11, however many. The problem with an AVR is that it has to divide that total power supply based on however many speakers you have. So I'm gonna hypothetically just give you some numbers. These aren't totally accurate, but let's say you're, that AVR is going to provide 140 watts by two. So let's say we add total of five speakers in your setup. That may go from 140 down to say 120. Then we add two more speakers. So now you have seven speakers that it has to power. That 120 may drop down to say 90. Um, again, I'm just making these numbers up. Um, and then if we go to, uh, let's say nine speakers, now you may be down to say 80. And then if you drop down to, uh, or if you go up to 11 speakers, like I do in my setup, I've got a 7.2.4 Adobe Atmos system that AVR would have went from maybe 140, it could drop all the way down to like 55 watts per channel. And so what happens is each speaker is going to get effectively less wattage per channel in your setup if you're using an AVR. And so again, that power supply has to divide kind of equally amongst however many speakers are in your setup. And so your question is, if I were to add an amplifier to my setup, and I'm assuming because you just mentioned the LCR, your left, center, and right, you're thinking about maybe adding a three-channel amplifier to your setup. So would that benefit your system sonically? Well, the number one, uh, I guess my first answer would be yes. And the biggest reason is because now you're taking the load off of really your main speakers, that front sound stage is now being handed off to a, a dedicated separate amplifier that can handle all of the power that needs to be driven to those individual speakers. And so now you've removed three of those speakers from the equation for the AVR, and that AVR can now feed more power to your side surrounds, and if you've got Atmos speakers, it can add more power and amplification to them as well, okay? So you're going to be able to get more power to that front sound stage, but the bigger part of that is when you add a, um, a dedicated amplifier, let's say one from Emotiva, maybe the XPA3, maybe a monolith three channel amplifier. A lot of times those are rated at 200 watts per channel. Now the great thing about it is you're getting a true 200 watts for each one of those speakers. You can't simply get that with an AVR, especially um, if you're powering five, seven, nine, or you know, 11 speakers with an AVR, you'll never get that. And so you're getting a lot more power to them. And so the good thing is when you have big things happen like explosions or you have gunshots or you have these dynamic scenes where it's super, super quiet, and then all of a sudden something erupts, something happens that's really, really loud. Having a, a dedicated amplifier gives you all the horsepower you need to make that happen instantaneously. And so think of it like this. 
let's say you've got a, um, let's just say a Honda Accord, nice car. It'll do 80 miles an hour, probably on the interstate, but it's gonna take a little while to get there. It may take 12 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, I don't know. Now pair that with something like a McLaren. Okay, you're gonna get to 80 miles an hour from stop to 80 miles an hour in a fraction of the time because you've got all that available horsepower. And the same thing applies when you're talking about amplifiers. You've got that on supply, instant demand of power and access to power for those dynamic situations in a movie and also in music. A lot of times in movie or in music, we've got these big transients. We've got a lot of different things that are happening and this dynamic range from quietness to, to huge peaks in the, in the score. And so when you're, when you're wanting to have that, that power on tap, that's where a dedicated amplifier will definitely help out. So another thing to consider is how big is your room? If you got a really small room, an AVR may completely handle your setup just fine for your listening levels, okay? If you got a much bigger room, and of course the further you sit from your speakers, the more power you're going to need as well. And so that'll play into the equation. Um, and then I kind of briefly mention it, you know, how loud do you listen to it? If you're always listening to, you know, a movie at 75 decibels, 65 decibels, maybe even 80, 85 decibels, it might not be a big deal for that AVR to handle that. But if you're driving it to reference and you're cranking this thing a lot, then again, that AVR may be kind of running out of gas depending on how big that power supply is. And so those are definitely some things to consider. So with all of that said though, yes, absolutely. I'm a firm believer in uh, separate amplification. I love knowing that no matter what I throw at my system, no matter what movie I'm watching, no matter what music I'm listening to, I don't have to worry about the receiver or the AVR running out of gas and going into distortion. I remember back in the day I had, um, I think it was a Pioneer uh, AVR. Okay, it was just five channel AVR. But I remember I could get it to a certain volume and my speakers would just start to sound really, really strained. The biggest thing is that the AVR was running out of gas. It didn't have enough power to efficiently drive that system, that five speaker system, to pretty loud volumes. Let's say that was at reference volume back then. Um, and so today having that separate amplifier allows me to crank this thing as high as I want. You know, again, you want to take care of your hearing, but if I wanted to jam out, if I've got a friend here that's just wanting to demo my setup, I may crank it up for a few seconds and just kind of really let it rip and have some fun with it. But I don't ever have to worry about that distorting. And so that's a benefit of that amplification, uh, having that dedicated amplifier. So yes, it definitely can benefit. The other thing to consider too is how sensitive are your speakers? Now I've got a video on speaker sensitivity. I'll post a link up here in the card above and in the description below. So you can check out that full video. But in a nutshell, every speaker is rated at a certain sensitivity. And some speakers are more sensitive than others. And so the higher the sensitivity, the easier it is for that speaker to get loud at the same volume. And so let's say, for instance, you've got a speaker that's rated at 95 decibels. What that means is that manufacturer took a meter or took a, uh, a microphone, placed it in front of the speaker at one meter, so three feet, and they played uh, basically they sent a one watt power amplification to that uh, speaker and then they measured it with a SPL meter, sound pressure level meter. So they're trying to see how loud does that speaker get if I feed it one watt and with a, with a microphone placed about three feet from it. And so they measure just how loud did it get at that distance with only one watt. And so if your speaker registers, say, 95 dB, if you compare that to a less efficient speaker, let's say this other speaker is 85 dB with one watt. 
Okay, basically what that means is if you're trying to get to reference levels, which is 85 dB with peaks up to 105, okay, that's a lot of amplification. I mean, that's a lot of SPL, and this one's over here is only at 85 decibels. Now, the interesting thing about sensitivity and about power is you have to double the amplification to gain three decibels in volume. So if you've got one watt, 85 decibels, you have to double that to two watts to get to 88 decibels. And you do the math and just keep doubling it and adding three decibels and see how many times you have to double this amplification, this 85 dB sensitive speaker to match this one over here that's 95 dB uh, sensitive. And so again, take a look at your speaker sensitivity. That's gonna play a role the less efficient your speakers are, the more your system's going to benefit having an amplifier. Now with all of that said, I've had many, many AVRs over the years, some mid-tier AVRs and even some a little bit higher end AVRs, and they powered full systems, no problem. But that caveat, most of the time I had clip speakers, which are very efficient. And now I've got JTR speakers, which are very efficient. But as I said, I still run an amplifier because I want to make sure that I'm feeding them everything that I need and everything that, I, that they'll need to effectively power uh, for that movie, for that dynamic movie or music that has just a lot of dynamics in it as well. And so with most of the home theater hobby, let's just face it, there's not a lot of things that we need. Okay, and so an amplifier is one of those things that I would kind of add on the last of your list. You know, make sure you got some quality subwoofers, make sure you've got quality speakers, especially up front in that left, center, and right. Then later on down the, the road, that would be one of those things that, that you add on that will just take it up to that next level. But I would just say and caution you, don't go into it expecting this is going to be night and day difference unless you've got a, um, an AVR that has a really small power supply and you've got maybe inefficient speakers. Again, in that case, a dedicated amplifier would probably be a huge deal to you. But in my situation, in most of my uh, home theaters that I've set up, I've always had efficient speakers. And so I, when I first added an amplifier to my setup many, many years ago, I really thought it was going to make this huge, massive difference and it just simply didn't. And so again, as long as you've got those expectations, um, I think it can definitely improve your setup. It can improve your soundstage up front and just give you a more full and just a bigger experience, um, especially if you really like to crank it. Now, if you're looking for an amplifier for your setup, I'll leave some links down in the description below. If you purchase using any of those links, it definitely helps out the channel. If you've got home theater questions, leave those in the comments below. And as always, you guys be blessed and we will catch you in the next video.